there's no there's i mean there's always more that we can learn and at the end of the day me who identifies as a male who identifies as a heterosexual there's going to be a lot of things that i will never experience and know what it's like because there's certain identities that i i do not have and and i'll never know what it's like to be discriminated in a lot of ways and so i just think that there's no way that i could know or feel what it's like for certain things. I'll give you an example. I was doing a, I was doing a workshop. And I'm gonna tell you, I made a mistake, you know, oversight, if you will. I remember we were having a conversation. There was about a hundred people in this room, and I, I'm making this presentation. And I mentioned something about sometimes you want to speak up and you want to do this work, but you feel like you don't have enough clout. And I said the words, "You feel as if you're on the bottom of the totem pole." So that was a comment that I made not thinking anything of it. Not too long after I had a Native American individual that raised their hand and said, you know, it's interesting that today's conversation is all about microaggressions, but I listened to you as our trainer mention the phrase bottom of the totem pole and I find that offensive. And I appreciate that audience member. First of all, I'm glad that I created a space in which someone felt comfortable to raise their hand and share this in front of a hundred people and basically called me out. And I wasn't offended at all. Cause again, I'm on a journey too. You know, I said, thank you so much. Thank you so much for saying this to me because I honestly, I didn't have any intentions to harm anybody. It wasn't something that was, it was clearly an accident or an oversight on my end. However, you are, and I wanted to validate their thoughts or sentiment because they're right. That would be a microaggression. I give you another example. I remember doing another session. Uh, this one was virtual and I had my presentation up, had my PowerPoint going and we were talking about Muslim women. And that was something that we we're in a conversation. So I remember on the slide, there was a, a picture of a woman with a hijab on. Someone raised their hand, their virtual hand, I guess, in the Zoom call. And they said, you know what? The challenge that we see a lot, and he, he identified as Muslim. He said, the challenge that we see is often our Muslim women are depicted as only wearing hijabs. And he said, there's so much more to our culture. There's so much more to our faith. And it seems like as a microaggression, it seems like the only time that women are presented within our culture as wearing hijabs. And that's not always the case. Again, there's more to it. And I took that feedback and I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And that's not something I thought about. It's not an identity that I have or I have a close relation to. I was trying to be diverse in my presentation. And so this, this is why we were having this conversation. But you're at it. There's a lot more to the culture and to the community. And one of those valuable lessons that I think is very important from these two stories that I've shared with you is the importance of, one, being open to feedback. Because you know what? These individuals, they, should, they spoke their mind. And you could see the passion in their voice. And so some of us, we get pushback. We get that feedback that's brought to us, stuff that we weren't expecting to hear. We said something very, very confidently and someone's pushing back and they're right. But how often do we get defensive about it? Oh, I didn't mean that. And so I had to take the, that feedback and, I, and it was lessons learned. So again, someone that does, someone that does trainings, that does workshops all the time, I have made mistakes. I've made mistakes as an educator. I've made mistakes throughout my, my professional career and also in my personal life, right? No one's perfect. We're human beings. I think it's important to come into this open-minded, okay? We're talking about creating a sense of belonging. And I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that will tell me stuff like, oh, well, I grew up in the same neighborhood as these kids, or I had the same experiences as this person, or my cousin, or my nephew, or my children are dealing with something similar. And I, I respect that. I respect that. But your experience is your experience. Your child's experience is their experience. And we can definitely learn from those things. We can take those like, as examples. And I saw something happen to my child or I saw something happen to my neighbor's child. And I said, that, that's not something that I would like to see uh, or I would like to do within my classroom or within my school building. I don't want those type of things. We can learn from that. But sometimes people will say, that's as far as I'm going to go. I don't want to hear anything else you had to say. I'll sh you know, they'll shut it down because they feel like they know everything. And I'm telling you today, again, as someone who literally does trainings and workshops all the time, who's on stage all the time, who does podcast interviews all the time, you're never there. There's always room for growth. There's always more that we can learn. I'm a living testimony of that. What are some ways 
that we can learn more? Well, let's talk about it. Some ways that you can learn more. I mean, some of these seem pretty straightforward, but uh, I think it's very important to bring up. Continuing education, okay? Uh, higher education, you can get like master's certificates, things like that. There's also conferences, PLCs and books. I think all of these are some ways to learn more, to hone your craft, to sharpen that knife, if you will. Maybe that's not the best example. But to sharpen your skills, maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Sharpen your skills. I think these are all ways that you can do that. I remember I had a supervisor that used to tell us, you know what? Professional development is very important, and I believe in sending my staff to conferences and events. However, in order to go to a conference, if you want us to pay for it, you have to present or at least put in an abstract or you know submit a proposal. You have to present put in a proposal. And if you do get an opportunity to present, you need to come back and teach us uh, what you learn or what you present as part of a staff meeting. They wanted you to participate. And I, it was a, a piece that I had never thought about or considered because I just thought, oh, well, you know, staff member, you're supposed to send me here or there. But it's an investment. The school, the organization is investing in you. And is there a way that you can give what you've learned what you presented? Is there a way that you can bring those things back and not only share it with the, the audience members that are actually the participants within this event or this conference, but also your internal department as well? Because if you work with students, you work with kids, guess what? You're not the only one that is going to interact with those individuals, okay? You got a whole team, you got a whole uh, school, you got a whole organization, that is tied and involved with students, how can it not benefit when you are presenting this information to them as well, especially those who weren't able to attend the same conference or able to attend your session. Okay, and again, PLCs are very important. And then also books. Finding books, I always say it, finding books written by people with those lived experience. Always use those as priorities. And then anything else, I recommend as being a supplementary resource, okay? Let's move into myths of professional development. So my school leaders, to my school leaders, you may have seen this before. You might have experienced this. You have those staff members who feel like it is right here. You have those staff members that feel like professional development is a waste of time. I'm going to dispel some of those myths. Well, there's actually some research that's going to dispel some of that those myths. At the end of the day, Professional development needs to be specific and intentional, okay? So that means that it needs to be practical, engaging, and relevant. Your school leader, you, you got to understand that everything doesn't need to, uh, that's the best way to say this. Again, I think the relevant piece is probably relevant and engaging. Those are some areas that needs to be really honed in on, all right? So let's talk about what does some of the research say, Okay. Some of the research talks about it. I'm going to just bring up two myths. I'm going to discuss two myths that are out there in regards to professional development. And these two myths, you hear them a lot. Okay. One, professional learning is a waste of time and money. You hear that a lot. Well, 